The first problem that a supercomputer had was figuring out which Pareto efficient allocation to choose, because it turns out there's tons of them, like an infinite number of possibilities, okay? And they range from uh, using the entire economy's resources to produce goods that make Bob happy and give all those resources to Bob and do nothing else for anyone else. That's Pareto efficient because if we wanted to make Alice a little bit better off, we'd have to take something away from Bob and that would be, that would make him worse off. It's not very desirable. Uh, I think most people would agree. Or we could have like another kind of Pareto efficient allocation is total equality. Uh, everybody is like uh, got the same utility. Okay. We could, we could find a allocation that's Pareto efficient that generates that outcome probably, or maybe uh, not. And then there's all sorts of different variations. So markets choose a Pareto, markets do get you somewhere. And it all comes down to the initial allocation of resources. So for our colonists, the big decision they have to make is how do they initially distribute property rights over all of the resources the economy has? Some property rights are easy to distribute. Like for example, uh, it's most people in modern societies agree everybody owns their own labor and their own time. Okay. And this, this, uh, we're going to assume this colony can do the same thing. What about those robots though? Uh, one sort of natural solution would be they could split them up all evenly. Okay. And that would like sort of say that everybody has the same, uh, resource base to start with, like the same property rights to begin with. And then the market goes and they might have different preferences. So they might choose to, uh, you know, attain different goods. Like, uh, you know, they might, some of them might focus a lot on buying food. Some of them might focus a lot on buying shelter, but they're all doing their own thing. And that's okay. So we might end up with different outcomes starting from like an initial equally position, but like there can be issues with this. Like suppose some people just are more, have more, innate talent for some ability, or perhaps they own a greater share of robots, you know, the capital stock, because it's the second generation and their parents did very well and bequeathed them to them. So in a real society, people have different initial endowments of goods. Okay. And the market is going to basically translate that initial endowment into a market outcome. And having more stuff to bar, like buy and sell with is going to, in general, increase the opportunity for the people, those people, like they're going to do better off. And so you can end up with these high inequality outcomes. So a market chooses a Pareto efficient allocation, but it chooses it based on that initial allocation. But there's another nice thing about markets called the is summed up in what's called the second welfare theorem, which is that any allocation you desire that is Pareto efficient can also be achieved by the market if you get the initial allocation of goods right. And that means that it's possible to use something like a tax policy or a redistribution policy, or even like for our colonists, just how they initially divide up ownership. Whatever kind of outcome they want to have, they can achieve using a market and they can be confident that a market will do it efficiently. So let me sum this, let me write this more. Uh, where'd it go? I have a whole thing here. There it is. All right. So we have the first welfare theorem, which is that all market allocations are Pareto efficient. And now let's have the second welfare theorem, which is kind of like turning the first one around. The first one said any market allocation is Pareto efficient. The second one says any Pareto efficient allocation can be achieved by a market under the same assumptions as before. So you might be worried that markets will generate Pareto efficient allocations. Uh, but maybe there's some Pareto efficient allocations that are extra good and a market can't get there because markets are inherently, you know, unequal or something. That's not the case. If you have the right initial an allocation of property rights, then a market can achieve whatever you desire. All right. 
Where's my little guy here? And same assumptions. Okay. So what's this kind of say for our colonists? Once again, economics does not totally solve the problem of how to allocate resources optimally in an economy, okay? We said a supercomputer, we could give it criteria for Pareto efficiency, and that's like something you certainly want to attain, achieve, it's necessary, but it's not sufficient. You can have bad, you can have Pareto efficient, uh, Pareto efficient allocations that are very tyrannical and, and bad for most people in the society. However, you know, most good allocations that everyone is sort of very happy, it's like a utopia, are also going to be Pareto efficient. And the second welfare theorem says that you can use a market to get to those places too. Okay. So again, we're left kind of back where we started. Uh, a supercomputer could do it, or a market could do it. A supercomputer can achieve any Pareto efficient allocation. So can a market. You just have to move around the initial allocations, which means you might give some people more robots, some people less. You might give everybody equal shares. You might divide up things a different way, whatever the case. Wherever you want to go, there's a way to get there with a market, okay? But still, we're left with this assumption like, all right, so you can do it both ways, but are markets any better? And to see that, we're going to need the next three, we're going to sort of t take on the next three objections to using a computer centrally planned economy.